this time on Psychic Investigators. In small town Maryland, a chicken farmer vanishes. We have searched the whole county. We couldn't find nothing. And we didn't know what was going on. It's a mystery, even to the police. Maybe she was not missing, but had become the victim of foul play. Until a rookie psychic takes the case. I said, it feels like something just hit me in the head. And uncovers a secret no one could imagine. Amid the farmland of Maryland's eastern shore lies the close-knit community of Berlin. In 1991, a sleepy place where family ties run deep, and so do their secrets. July 29th, and 55-year-old chicken farmer Mildred Louise Williams, known to friends and family as Miss Louise, says goodbye to her elderly mother and leaves for her cleaning job in nearby Ocean City. Miss Louise tells her mother she'll be back at noon. She's never seen again. Miss Louise's brother and sister-in-law, Robert and Nettie Moxley, will never forget that day. When she didn't come home, Granny called Dawn. Dawn said, oh, we'll check around. She's probably gone somewhere running around, Mom. Don't worry about it. Dawn is Miss Louise's 32-year-old daughter who lives nearby with her son and her husband, Billy. Dawn doesn't seem too worried, but Granny Moxley is. Miss Louise is never late. If she told you she was going to be there, she was there. At 7.30 that night, Dawn turns up at the farm with Miss Louise's red truck. She tells her grandmother she found it in the parking lot of the supermarket. Dawn says her mother is probably out drinking, and she doesn't want her driving under the influence. By midnight, there's still no word from the missing woman. Granny Moxley convinces her granddaughter to call the police. She said, Dawn, if you don't call the cops, I'm calling them. And so Dawn did call the police, but she told them that this is my crazy grandmother. My mother's run off with a man, and my grandmother's just hysterical. It's OK. The police aren't overly worried either. Miss Louise is a recent widow, fun-loving, and someone who likes to party. She played. We all do. She loved to drink once in a while. Everybody remembers parties yeah. with her. She was always joking around. But Miss Louise's siblings believe something is wrong. The day she went missing, a family vacation was planned. And Miss Louise never misses a party. I know it wasn't like my sister to take off, you know, like that, two or three days without calling. Two days after she vanished, the Moxley siblings, Dale, Robert, and Nettie, head to Berlin to see what they can find out about their sister. The first thing they notice is the truck that Don drove home from the grocery store. And the vehicle had just been washed, they say. It was so clean. It said to me, something was wrong here. In Miss Louise's house, another clue that something is not right. She had a safe in there with a lot of money in it. Safe was open and but no money in it. News of an empty safe is enough to get the police over to the farm, but not enough to change their mind about Miss Louise. I was pretty much convinced at that point in time she may have been with someone and been off drinking, so forth. Trooper Paul Frick worked the missing persons case. So at the point that we didn't have any reason to believe anything other than the lady was missing uh, due to her own reasons rather than foul play. But the police do issue a missing persons report across the state. Sergeant Bill Gordy worked the case from nearby Wicomico County. I was aware of the case. It had gotten quite a bit of notoriety. And we had had a, a small role in just tracking down uh, leads of potential sightings and that sort of thing. But every lead comes to nothing. The Moxleys take matters into their own hands. 
we called hospitals. We called nursing homes. We walked the woods. I think we have searched the whole county, but we couldn't find nothing. We didn't know what was going on. It seemed like I wanted to just turn everything upside down just to find her, but you couldn't. You just kept running into dead ends. Dawn and Billy even appear on television, tearfully asking viewers for any news of Miss Louise. Please come home or, or call. Yes. A few days after Miss Louise disappears, her brother Dale Moxley stumbles on a magazine story about Deborah Heineker, a Maryland psychic. She has been praised for locating Vader, a search and rescue dog gone missing from the canine police unit in Montgomery County. Dale calls the family immediately. And I just said, maybe this is how we could, you know, get some help here. Deborah Heineker, a former computer programmer, is new to the world of psychic investigation. I can focus on a subject or something that belongs to the victim. That's when I start to get the pictures, or sometimes I will hear sounds. I will allow myself to be the victim so that I can get a better picture of exactly what happened to them in their final moments. The psychic agrees to come to Berlin, but first, she asks the family to send her a photograph of Miss Louise, along with some of her personal items. I started to tune in, and the numbers 335 came to me. I saw a white horse. It also came to me that Miss Louise was getting ready to go on some sort of vacation. I clearly saw a building, and I made the angle of the metal roof. Three days later, when the Moxleys pick up the psychic at the airport, they're not prepared for what she asks them. I read the numbers, and I said, do these numbers mean anything to anyone? She said, 335. My brother-in-law said that's Don's and Billy's address. When Mildred Miss Louise Williams disappears from her home in Berlin, Maryland, the police suspect she's gone on a bender. But a psychic sees a set of numbers, and that arouses suspicion. She said 335. That's Don's and Billy's address. Could Miss Louise's daughter and son-in-law have something to do with her disappearance? They had got in a fuss two weeks before because Louise had told him that she had changed her will. Dawn and Billy had recently stopped Miss Louise from seeing her grandchild. In retaliation, Miss Louise threatened to disinherit them. After my sister disappeared, Billy Warren would never look me in the eye. Deep in your heart, you have a funny feeling. With Dawn and Billy present, the Moxleys say nothing. But what about her other visions? The vacation? We planned a family reunion in North Carolina for a week. Every one of the Moxleys were going to meet. We were all going to, you know, go on vacation. But the white horse and the metal roof are a mystery. The Moxley siblings drive the medium to Billy and Dawn's farm, the very address she saw in her vision. We went to Dawn and Billy's house, and there was this white horse in the fence right alongside the road near their house. It was spooky. Still unaware of the siblings' own suspicions, the psychic becomes uneasy as she nears the house. She takes Nettie Moxley aside. When I had her a bit to herself, I basically said, I'm afraid of Billy, so don't me leave me alone with him. And she agreed. I think she had no intention of leaving me alone with him. They enter the house and go into the kitchen. When Deborah got to the kitchen, she got a terrible headache. She felt a terrible pain. I said, it feels like something just hit me in the head. 
I think she creeped Billy out. She worried him a lot. I started feeling as if Billy and Dawn didn't want me in their house. They were being very fidgety, and they were trying to hurry me out. So we go outside, and there's this dirt path. And I said, I want to walk down this little dirt road. The same radar that knew that Vader was in the woods, it was that sort of radar. It just pulls me. And Billy did not want me to go down that road. He said, you don't want to go down there? That, that place is full of snakes. So that was enough to deter me from going back there. The psychic's intuition matches the siblings' growing suspicions. They believe Billy and Don are hiding something. But what? Deborah Heinecker returns to Catonsville, Maryland, but she's not finished with Miss Louise yet. Over the next few weeks, she continues to experience strange, extrasensory flashes. I was hearing the buzz saw, and I felt as if I had been pushed into almost quicksand. Like I was being pulled down and the mud was just coming into my mouth, coming into my face, just being covered with mud and that I was going to drown there. It was very frightening. A buzz saw, drowning in mud. Is Deborah Heinecker looking for a missing person or a dead body? Her psychic intuition tells her Miss Louise may have been murdered. She makes a difficult phone call to Nettie Moxley. I said, I don't want to start trouble in the family, but I said, I felt that perhaps Dawn's husband, Billy, had killed Miss Louise and buried her either in or next to the pond behind their house. Her response was that they believed that also, but they needed me to help them prove it. But proving it is easier said than done. Billy is an upright, church-going member of the community, not your typical murder suspect. Mr. Warren had a stable and positive life. He had a nice job, a, a, a home, a family. The Moxley siblings pass along the psychic's unnerving visions to the police, but they fall upon deaf ears. They still believe the most likely scenario is that Miss Louise has run off with a drinking buddy. I've never believed in psychics. I've never believed in the supernatural. Uh, I've only ever believed the living are the people that can hurt you, not the dead. People that say they can tell you things that have happened or are going to happen, I just never had much faith in that. As the weeks pass, the psychic and the Moxleys increasingly think Miss Louise is dead and Billy is the killer. But without a body or hard evidence, they can't persuade the police to ramp up the investigation. You can't arrest someone on a whim or what you think happened. You have to be able to prove what you're accusing someone of. If that's the case, uh, as I felt at the time, but couldn't prove anything more, uh, I couldn't in good conscience do anything different than what I was doing. I didn't have enough evidence. The police won't forge ahead on the word of a psychic, but Miss Louise's family can and does. She just made our search even stronger. She made our will stronger. And it just gave us such the strength as a family to go search even harder. Three months after she vanished, the case is given new life. Sergeant Bill Gordy is transferred to the Berlin Police Department from nearby Wicomico County. My gut told me that there were elements of the investigation that needed to be refocused and that maybe she was not missing but had become the victim of foul play. In 
Berlin, Maryland, local chicken farmer Mildred Miss Louise Williams is missing. Her siblings and a psychic suspect her daughter and son-in-law. With a new detective on the case, their suspicions are suddenly taken seriously. We met with the Moxleys and uh, tried to work out something with them that would be uh, a cooperative type effort in the investigation. Miss Louise's sister, Nettie Moxley, calls Deborah Heinecker with the news. And detectives drop their earlier skepticism and begin consulting with the psychic regularly by phone. I view a psychic as much the same as an investigative aid as, say, a polygraph. It can many times put pressure on a person. And since we didn't have a lot of active leads to pursue, it was believed that this might well present one of those situations. There wasn't a day that went by that I didn't think of Billy and that case and basically how I was going to get him. Not only do the psychic and the Moxleys have their sights set on the grieving daughter and son-in-law, now the police start watching Don and Billy more carefully. We did try to ratchet up the attention on him to let them know that we were more closely scrutinizing their current and past statements and behavior. Billy Warren has been acting strangely, nervous, edgy, short-tempered. He was just not a cool, calm, collected person. Finally, the police ask Billy and Don to take a polygraph. They agree, and on December 12, 1991, the tests are scheduled. And Billy said, Don's not going to take the polygraph. And then after just a brief conversation, uh, himself elected not to. He developed a difficulty speaking. He was almost incoherent. He was obviously very frightened, very upset, very unnerved by the entire experience. It was obvious that there was more on his mind than just the refusal of a polygraph test. I think he knew the door was coming shut on him. The pieces were there. It was only a matter of time. For the police, refusing to take a polygraph is a red flag. But it's still not enough to make a move. We had a lot of conjecture. We had a lot of, this doesn't add up, this doesn't look right. But physical evidence to tie him to a crime, zero. Maybe that physical evidence can be found where the psychic had been telling them all along. I told the police that I felt that she was in mucky soil, and Billy and Dawn had that pond right back there, and I had been drawn there originally, so I wanted them to go there. But finally, I asked the investigators uh, that were currently working on the case to go out to Mr. Warren's house. There, two of the investigators head towards the pond while Trooper Frick waits outside. Suddenly, the door opens and Billy calls out to him. Billy has something to say. He just literally fell to pieces in front of me and started confessing. Five months after she vanished, the terrible mystery of what happened to the chicken farmer is solved. Billy says on July 29th, Miss Louise came over to visit. He was alone. They argued over Dawn's inheritance. Miss Louise threatened to disinherit Don once again. He became enraged. There was a claw hammer there. He had been doing some home repairs. He picked up the hammer and swung it, struck her in the head. He says she fell, and he tried to get her off the carpet pretty quick. He didn't want her to mess the carpet up. He buried Miss Louise in the mud next to the pond behind his house, washed her truck, and drove it to the grocery store parking lot. It was meant to be found as though she was there and left it like meeting someone. Later, when the psychic nearly stumbled on Miss Louise's burial spot, Billy panicked, dug his mother-in-law up, dismembered her with a buzzsaw, and reburied her under the floorboards of his woodshed, a woodshed with a slanted metal roof. Billy goes on to say that his wife had no knowledge of the crime. The murder weapon and the body are later recovered, as is evidence of blood spatter in the couple's home, corroborating the confession and the psychic's vision. 
Miss Louise evidently had been bludgeoned in their kitchen. And when they pulled up the rug, they found her blood under the rug exactly where I was standing when I said that I felt that I had been hit in the head. Billy Warren is sentenced to 20 years in prison for the murder of Mildred Louise Williams. Then, Billy drops a bombshell. He reveals his wife, Dawn, helped him to cover up the murder. She's charged as an accessory and sentenced to five years. In a cruel twist of fate, Dawn receives her mother's inheritance on her release. She knowed what happened from day one, you know, from the first minute. You gotta realize you're being torn apart from love and hate. You love someone and they've done something to, to hurt one of your family members. Now you, there's hate over here pulling that apart. It's your mother. I mean, she gave you life. And you can cut her up and put her in the woods and walk out that door and go to church every Sunday morning looking over in those woods and knowing your mother's over there buried. The police credit Deborah Heineker with pushing Billy over the edge and into the arms of the law. I personally believe she played a pivotal role. Uh, I would like to think we could have done it without her. However, that's not the case. Her predictions were the key to causing him to confess. When he confessed, he said that he wasn't afraid of all the Moxleys. He wasn't afraid of the police. He was afraid of me because he knew I was going to get him. To put it bluntly, I think she's the reason the case was solved. So if someone asked me today what I think of psychics, I'd have to say that I have changed my views completely and I'd listen to a psychic. Deborah Heinecker also turned the Moxleys into believers. I thought she was super. As far as I'm concerned, she can walk on water now. It's like she turned the lights on to everything. We were all in the dark till she came along. I've never believed in psychics. I don't know much about them but I know that she was right on and she helped us. I actually felt that justice was going to be served for Miss Louise. I felt that Miss Louise deserved to have that confession. The Moxleys have never gotten over it. She was a good friend. If you needed her, she was there. She should have had a peaceful death. I just miss her. Thank you.